Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course I'm Clayton Chick. This is the wonderful outdoors and I am still on Lake Winnipeg with Chris gone, staying in the Yeti, enjoying some greenback walleye fishing. Something different today though, I'm going to do a little bit of a run and gun mission. It's beautiful outside. I've got a guest with me, Mike Clatt right there. Real life with Mike is his YouTube channel. He's, I've shown him before in some channels or in my, uh, my videos before but his uh, channel will be linked below. He's gonna kind of film his day, I'm gonna film mine, but we are gonna kind of double team things to see if we can find a pot of fish and get on some hungry walleye. I think Chris himself from Gone Fishing is gonna come out and fish with us at some point as well. And that's the thing with Chris is he'll get all his guys set up, organized, and he's always looking for more fish to possibly move the Yetis to. He's not going over there and pounding all the fish, we're gonna do that part, but he is going to look for pods of fish to possibly move the Yetis to. There is a pile of fish around here. These fish have just been so a little bit negative in the last couple days, but that's been the whole general census of Lake Winnipeg right now is I got here basically when the bite turned off. That's the way she, that's the way she goes. Anyways, we're gonna jump in the truck in my dirty, dirty deer hitting truck and uh, we'll go see if we can find some greenbacks. Let's do it. You'll have to go to Mike's video to watch what he just caught, but he kind of smoked a 28 incher first fish. Easy peasy. It was a big fat one too. Oh, there's a huge pot of fish over there. Holy cow. Probably not far from my, I gotta get this thing going. That's crazy. So apparently they're, Apparently they're big pods sometime. There we go. Man, that's so slick to be able to mark them. Go drill a hole, let's slide over and catch them. Oh, Mike gets the big ones and I get the eaters. Okay, well we won't show that one off on the main camera. We'll just get it back down. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go, that fish flew in there flew in a little bit of move over definitely paid off here not a bad fish at all okay the running gun is gonna pay off i'm sure right there what a nice 23 ish probably going back i'm just literally 30 feet on the other side of the truck all oh, that fish went down i saw it shoot down and it spooked another fish <laughs> it shot right down the light image that was cool Okay, all they did was move, move spots, probably about uh, 100 feet, 200 feet where I was, maybe a little bit more, and set up a shop here beside my truck again, drilled a bunch of holes all around me, and I'm sitting here with the live scope, I'm looking, and if I see a fish, I go over there with the flasher, drop down, jig them up. If you're on fish, from what I know at Lake Winnipeg, or if you can see fish, you make small moves. If you can't see any fish, then you make big moves. Well, fish here for a little bit and these fish cleared out and I think I'm gonna jump in the truck and keep looking around a little bit more. I think I'll turn this video into like my top five um, tips for Lake Winnipeg. Keep in mind that I don't have a pile of Lake Winnipeg experience. So all of my tips are just like from small personal experience as I'm learning Lake Winnipeg. I haven't fished it a lot. I think it's only my third winter I've ever been here in the one day or one winter I think I fished it for like a day and a half. Last year I fished for a couple days just in the ice yeti. This is like the first day of like running gun I've ever got to do outside myself like this in a truck. But my first tip for Lake Winnipeg, especially if you don't have much experience here, is get a guide. Not only to help put you on fish, because they are uh, on this lake every day and they're looking around and they're seeing what the fish are doing. So a guide is a great option for sure. Obviously you've seen, I've been fishing with Chris Gone in my last video in the Yeti. He does Yeti trips. He doesn't do as much as the run and gun anymore, but if he has availability, he's obviously open to it if it's possible. 
Um, some other outfitters like Matt Cornell um, is a, a really good option. Um, Matt Hobson runs out of Snow Bears. There's Donovan Pierce with Blackwater Cats. There's a lot of different options out there for guides. So my first option would be, or my first tip I should say, not option, my first tip is to get a guide. Also to, it'll allow you safe travel on the lake as well because they'll 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 send you to an access point pick you up there and then they'll get you over to your fishing area safely because this area does have a lot of heaves and danger and especially if the storm comes up it can get really white out here and disgusting so tip one from cso is get a guide oh boy that fish came out of nowhere wasn't even looking I wasn't even looking. I bet you it's a sauger. Nope, just a hungry walleye. Okay, nice. We have tried a pile of spots. Perfect, I was gonna let them go anyway. We've tried a pile of different spots. Like, I mean, an insane amount. I think we're on like spot six or seven where we're moving and just looking, moving and looking. And Chris found some areas that had some smaller fish, but we're, we're looking for bigger ones, right? Finally got to a spot where he's seen some bigger ones. So we stopped and fished a little bit. So tip. Number two for Lake Winnipeg would be willing to move around until you find what you're looking for. Now, obviously, yes, you have days where you're just gonna go out, it's gonna be super cold, you're gonna drive out to your spot, you're gonna plop your shack down, and you're just gonna hope they come to you. But if you have a nice day like today where it's, it's, not, it's not cold, it's windy, it's no sun, but I can fish outside right now with no gloves, and we have the ability to move around a little bit. So tip two is, being willing to move around until you find what you're looking for. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, catch him away from the truck too. Nice. Nice little eater right there. We'll just put this guy back right here and then we'll get rebaited and we'll share another tip. Okay, things are good. We're catching a couple of fish, or I'm catching a couple of fish at this spot. The other spots. Mike's Mike did really well in those areas. It was the Mike Clatt show. He caught like a 28, a 26, a 25. So makes like I said earlier in this video, make sure you go to his video to watch his day from the video or his video from the day. <laughs> Sometimes I talk before I think. Go watch his video from the day and then you can apply like the tips that I'm talking about in this video to his video as well because he's kind of doing the same thing. Tip number three is to take advantage of both of your rods. You notice the last fish I caught was a dead stick one that was just over there. Now I'm looking with the live scope and I'm able to see, I got a fish working my rattle bait here. I'm able to see over there. So I knew to go over there and fish for that fish, but you at least want to put a dead stick down there, right? And whether you have just a, a live, oh, I missed that one, a live minnow, a dead minnow, something like that. But take advantage of your other line or your two lines in Lake Winnipeg in Manitoba, you're allowed to fish with two lines. Take advantage of it, right? Whether you're gonna run a live minnow and a dead minnow or an active bait, like a rattle bait, like I am right now, and the dead minnow there, something, something along the lines. Not very often should you fish two of the same baits unless something is firing very heavy. So tip three is take advantage of your two lines. Oh, here we go, come on. There we go, nice. That fish was aggressive, wow. That fish was aggressive. That's what I like to see. Okay, a perfect eater <laughs> going back. Okay, we're locked and loaded down there again with the jig in the minnow over there. Things are good, nothing too crazy for me yet, but I'm just like catching fish. I like trying to figure out something, right? And not that there's anything to figure out like Winnipeg, it seems like it's just a big open bowl and you have to be willing to search around for them. Like I said, for my, my last tip, or maybe it was tip two or whatever, I can't remember. Anyway, tip four would be good equipment. Don't underpower yourself, but also find some kind of rod that you like that will have a lot of backbone or a good amount of backbone, but also super, super forgive, forgiving. I say that because you're fishing a lot of shallow water. Right now we're 10 feet of water, 10, 10 feet of water. So by the time you set that hook and jack them, that fish is right up underneath that ice. You need something that's going to bob good and absorb that head shake, but you also need that backbone. 
the two rods that I like a lot to come to mind are the True Grit, which is a 38 medium from Frostbite, and a 39 medium light Drench. I, I run my jig in the minnows with the Drench. I run my rattle baits and bigger baits with the True Grit. Good equipment. So not just, not just a rod, obviously good line too. I know some people say that fluorocarbon isn't a huge thing for Lake Winnipeg because it's a very dirty body of water. I feel like the zebra mussels are slowly, slowly, Chris says he's got a tank on right now. Oh, no way. Oh, 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 Chris had a big one on, it came off. That's like, right, the hole, you lose a lot of fish at the bottom of the hole. So having a good rod, you'll lose less. It doesn't mean you're not gonna lose any, it means you'll lose less. I got a fish over there at my jig and a minnow. I should probably go over there. Oh yeah, that's, that's a little bit better fish for sure. That's a better fish. That is a better fish. That thing hit me hard. That's a big one. Pretty sure that's a big fish. Easy girl, easy, 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 easy. Absorb, absorb. Come on, and now just come up. There's my, there's my swivel. There's my swivel. Oh yeah, that's a good one right there. Yes, that is a good fish. Oh, amazing. That thing come in and smoked it. That thing is awesome right there. That is a gutter. I'm thinking probably, I'm not even gonna measure, probably 26-ish, something like that. Yeah, it's good. Okay, back in. That's awesome. Easy, deadly. Okay, things are good. We've worked pretty hard to find a pot of fish that are eating and uh, we're making it happen. How's that? Amazing. Oh, I just caught that nice fish. And I was gonna move my dead stick over a bit and Chris catches a big one as I'm drilling the hole. I'll uh, pump a picture right here. It was a beautiful 28 and a half. So we're definitely on some fish. This is awesome. The only reason I'm not doing more video stuff over there too, it's like, it's just windy and it's hard enough when you're trying to run and gun and film yourself. I had a cameraman. I'd have had somebody over there, right? Like filming him as well, but it's very, very cool. That's uh, two big fish caught today. One by Mike, 28, which I'll see on his video. 28 and a half by Chris. Mine was, like I said, like a 26-ish, maybe 27. But things are good. Things are looking up for sure. I'm pumped. This is awesome. You know, with that photo, that'll actually kind of lead me in to tip five. And that would be don't get stuck in chasing bites. You're gonna see photos online, especially Lake Winnipeg, because on, on any weekend, there could be 400 people out here. You're going to see big fish pictures. You're going to be see people asking, where were you fishing? They're going to, obviously some people are gonna tell you, some people aren't. Don't necessarily, or take all that with a grain of salt, as in, first of all, the person could be lying to where they were to lead you on to put you somewhere else, so you don't go fish their area they are. Second of all, these fish I've noticed, they move so much. They migrate so often. So don't get stuck chasing a bite that might've been there the day before, right? Go find your own bites, go find your own pot of fish. It's going to lead you to more success. Look at right now, there's people way in the distance. There's one shack way over there. There's nobody this way. Even though Lake Winnipeg is so big, I've noticed at times it can feel so small because everybody groups up together. Spread apart. Don't crowd other people because you're only going to hurt yourself. Go find a pot of fish that other people aren't fishing for. If there's 40, 40 fish in an area, why fish with 10 people for those 40 fish? I'd rather go somewhere and fish for 20 fish that nobody's fishing for. You're gonna have a better chance at a bigger fish and a better chance of staying on that pod longer. Come on. Come on, come on, there we go. That was awesome. That was so cool to see that fish stretched out on the live imaging over there. Awesome, they 
fish are firing up right now. This is why I came to Lake Winnipeg right here. Well, not exactly. Obviously I came for the big ones, but I mean just for fired up walleyes. So good. Is he still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's a nice fish. It's decent-ish, not huge. Neater, good old eater. Emerald green. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Yeah, just a small one though. Well, we made our, probably my last move for the day before I head home and catch, just wants a flop out of my hand here. Catch a, a little eater. I do want to add one more tip, even though I said five tips. Something that will help you on Lake Winnipeg is having a map for it. And Anger's Edge, uh, Anger's Edge Mapping does have Lake Winnipeg charted, the south end anyway. Some stuff on the west side, some stuff on the east side, some stuff up by Hecla. If you don't have a, a Lowrance unit and you're just driving around like I am in the truck right now, I'm using it on my phone from the Avenza apps. You can download there and you can download the whole Winnipeg South Basin Bundle, the Winnipeg North Bundle, the Red River, etc. I highly recommend going out with the map. Even though we're fishing a lot of featureless stuff, it'll kind of keep you in the right depth area and nothing else too. You can even use it as a GPS and wherever you access, you can mark a spot to know that that's where you're going to leave at the end of the day. So it gives you, helps you navigate the lake. But Angler's Edge mapping works very well. Chase it back down. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Turn on it again. Yeah, come on. There we go. This is the one right here. This is the one. This is what I want. Easy. Easy. It's coming up. It's coming up. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Not huge, but nice. Went to a cast master, baby. Gold cad cast master. That's a gutter, not a cranker, but it's nice. Oh, yes. Oh, easy, easy girl. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, go back down, go back down. Oh, okay. It's good. We're on them. Well, the big fish eluded me on Lake Winnipeg once again. I got one nice one, like 26, maybe 27. I got one just recently here, like a 25 incher. I saw some big marks. They were smarter than me, but I don't quit. I will be back to Lake Winnipeg and I'm going to catch a 30 inch walleye to Lake Winnipeg one of these days. I, I've never wanted it more than ever after today, running and gunning, had a blast. Thank you very much to Chris and Mike for hanging out. I also got a special care package dropped off by Big Smoke Barbecue right here, which uh, will be for some future videos. I'm pretty pumped. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm sure this video is all over the place because I just literally jumped in my truck, drove around, drilled holes, fished. I have a feeling it's gonna be an editing nightmare. Thank you so much. And don't forget, get outside.